Welcome to Let's Fucking Chat. I'm Kelsey. And I'm Alex. Let's talk about some stuff. So how's your how was your week? <laughs> <laughs> um it was amazing. Um the weather's been really nice here, kind of. I don't know, it's been rainy, then like nice sunny days. Um, my throat's kind of been hurting. I finally got my humidifier yesterday. Not too sure if that did act like if it is actually helping me at all because my throat still fucking hurts but like i'd say overall just a very nice you know like calm week nothing like extravagant happened at all so nothing nothing too crazy um just like the same old same old what about you uh my week uh so we had reese uh, i don't remember this was this is the beginning did the last um last recording was that in was that in april no that was before, that was before april okay so yeah this this week i uh, uh i was supposed to finish the project that i was supposed to be on for only a month because it was only supposed to be a month at work. oh yeah um but they were just like oh we still need people to work on this project so Ooh. only i am now working on this project Oh my goodness. With the original guy and the original guy just really just doesn't he's just not I just have a lot of problems with him. (laughs) He's because he he serves as the manager of the project and his management skills are just sub sub levels like it's really really bad and like a lot of times I'm the type of person where for the most part I'm very passive like I'm very like you know, if you're going to tell me to do something, usually for the most part, I'll, I'll usually do it. Even if I have complaints, I'll be like, all right, whatever. But when I get too annoyed at that thing or when I'm like, okay, well, this is a little bit, I, 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 I just really don't want to do this or something like that. Or like, this is just really yeah, stupid like for you to ask me that. Yeah. I get like super sharp with my tongue. I get like yes, really, really like, that. dude, like <laughs> you need to learn how to manage this better because it's annoying me. Uh, so we had like, we had back and forths over the past like week where it was just like me saying this is really stupid why do you why are you like running it like this and then him being like oh well you know it is what it is and i'm just like it's not what it and is you're like no yeah it's not it yeah. doesn't have to be what it Get is it together uh yeah. oh god so yeah that that was really really annoying dealing with uh uh dealing with him um music has not actually been going that well this week um i've just kind of um I'm in the middle of a bunch of things. I'm still waiting for my rapper to give me vocals. I'm actually about to email, like not email him, but uh, message him and say, "Yo, where my shit at?" <laughs> yeah. Um, and then friendly reminder. I'm mixing in this other guy's audio, and he is just really just hard headed and doesn't even, doesn't know at all what he wants. Like, he he wants to make good music, but he's just he's very tone deaf. As well as mm. like, um, he doesn't know how music is structured, so like he'll make he'll make music and then he'll send it to me to mix, and I'm just like, I don't think this is what you want. Like this doesn't act, this doesn't sound like a song or this doesn't sound yeah. good. Um, but then he'll he'll use the defenses like, oh, I'm just trying to be someone different. I'm trying to you know do my own thing. And but you're like, this is bad different. <laughs> exactly, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't know how to tell you this, but like, there's a difference between being different. <laughs> And then it just not being, <laughs> like not being yeah, it, not being good. Yeah, it's just not it, chief. Aye, aye, aye. Um, and so like I legit, he he, him and I were working on the uh, working on the song, and I was basically writing for him. I was just like, you know what, like, because he doesn't really know how to write that well. Um, and so I start like giving him a bunch of just uh, uh things to like you know to rap or to sing, and he just I he ended up just fucking off playing video games while i'm writing his song and then at the very end of it i basically write him the entire song where like only one section he had to fill in and i'm like okay but this section you just have to fill that in and then you'll have an entire song so he decided to i don't I, I, i honestly don't even remember what he decided to do but it was something along the lines of either just completely repeat the same no 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 he didn't repeat anything that was like a big problem he just completely just like I think he just um, freestyled that part, 
So like everything else sounded pretty like structural because it's it's a song and like you know everything makes sense. Yeah. But then when you start to freestyle, but that felt like out of place. Yeah, it felt out of place because it's freestyling, so there, so nothing oh, makes sense. And like he just did not follow the structure of the song that I said to him. And it's like, dude, I gave you everything and you just destroyed it, and it's so bad. <laughs> and he doesn't know when he doesn't know how to stay on beat, and he doesn't know when he, when he's off beat, which is insane, which is super weird to me. It's I don't know. That's so he keeps like telling me like, hey, you know, uh, I, I finished mixing it to like my standards because for some reason he just doesn't want a good sounding song. So like whenever like I try to push it towards that direction, he's like, uh, you know, let's let's move it back towards where it was originally. So after a while, I'm just like, all right, whatever, we'll do it your way. But at some point, I'm just kind of like, I can't do it like like I can't from like my heart do it that way because <laughs> it just sounds so bad <laughs> so recently he's been trying oh, to get me on a call because he's trying to um he's trying to like mix it his way which is honestly i, I i'd like it like that like i just tell like i told him to just call me and tell me what to do because obviously he wants something it specifically his way and he doesn't want it in my way at all so it's just like dude just tell me what you want me to do and i'll do it um, yeah tell me yeah but at this point the problem is I that can't read your mind recently he's just been flaking he i've just been he's just been like okay hey are you ready to call I'm like yeah i'm ready to call i got like 30 minutes let's go and then he just ghosts me and the next day he's like oh hey hey alex alex him. are you ready and i'm just like yes i'm no. ready and then he just ghosts me and i'm just drop like him. holy shit you're so annoying <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely if he does this to you like another time you should just be like hey like i'm sorry but i no longer want to work with you you obviously can't meet a call that we have scheduled my time is a priority of mine so like if you can't come to this call then i'm sorry like this is not professional at all like we cannot work together anymore well, boop, boop, bye. Luck, yeah bye. Luck, like to be fair he is just like he's not we're not doing this for any like business reasons so i'm just doing it because like i find it really like it it teaches me how to mix so I, he's not paying me or anything like that but no he just i don't know I guess. it's really but like really your time hard. like your time matters and yeah. like just even if you're not getting paid like it's just the principle like okay we obviously don't get paid to make this podcast, but like we at least say like, hey, around eight on Saturday, we're going to record. So what do we do? We both kind of record around eight o'clock. But like if we do need to like push it back a day, we at least tell the other person. And mm -hmm. like it's just like the underlying like respect for each other's time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like I would just look at it like that. Like if you still want to work with him, like work with him. But it, I would be like, if he does this again like hey man like this isn't really like professional um i value your time i value my own time like please can you like commit to 30 this 30 minute window that you said you can do like follow through because that's your responsibility as the other party yeah yeah uh, i was gonna i was gonna talk to him directly like the next time we call because again I, i'm not very i'm not one to keep uh uh my my problems with people you know <laughs> in yeah, my head hidden. uh you're just like hey man yeah <laughs> so yeah we, we, so me. far we've set it up for tomorrow at 1 30 we'll see if he follows along with that all um right. i'm all i'm all Better fine man. for like i'm not i'm not super super big on like i don't care much for like flakiness as long as you tell me like that's my only really problem yeah, with this. Like, just, a like reason yeah say, I mean, say hey you know There's this no is coming reason. up sorry like i'll you know give yeah. me like 30 minutes or we'll do this he's literally giving you no reason yeah he's nothing he just ghosts and it's just like you fucking like bye yeah yeah like you fucking asshole yeah especially since he knows how busy i am like i'm, I'm always yeah. working on something or there's always something that's on my mind so like me setting up time for you is like very like like that means that i'm putting i'm, I'm putting you ahead of like the other things that i find very important which should be like yeah uh, you're like prioritizing someone in like your time that's what exactly. i'm saying like your time is very valuable so like mm -hmm. if you're blocking out 30 minutes like the least they can do is respect you and like we keep saying like even if you can't do it give a fucking reason any reason or just yeah. like literally be like i overbooked something on my own part like i'm sorry like own up to it don't just like ghost someone like everyone's time is like precious like hello yeah, exactly no matter what you're doing like 
a reason, any reason. It could be like my tooth hurts or like I've yeah exactly yeah I yeah, I don't like, care. All right, about, cool. I just, I just want Let's a reason. That's reschedule. all. Reschedule. <laughs> yeah, anything like not just like you just straight up forgot and didn't want to tell me. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, and then Oof. other than that, I I had a I had a really good stream. I'm pretty sure it was I don't know if did I talk about my really good stream last time? I don't remember when I. When I did the stream. I don't think so. I had a really great stream um, the other nice. day, uh, and it and it it was very like to be fair, I only had like one viewer, but it was a like to be fair. Aww. Usually, I go back and forth between like one, two, three, and mm -hmm. then like, um, and I'm pretty sure like my usual like one viewer is a bot usually, <laughs> and I don't, I don't <laughs> know why that 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 like exists on Twitch, but whatever. What? But th yeah, they, they have like these bots that'll just like sit there and like, and it's just kind of like, okay, I kind of want to ban this thing. But uh, I think, I think there's a specific reason why they exist. I don't know why. Hmm. But this time it was an actual person and it was a person who Ooh. I was actually communicating back and forth with who I, nice. um, I didn't know personally. It was just like a, just a, a person who had recently joined my stream a while ago and they come back and they talk to me back and forth and they're actually interested in the stream, which is really fucking good. Oh, um, and I, yeah, I felt really, really happy with it. And so I had, I recently had another stream yesterday and the person came back and he was still as interested in the, in the stream as, as he was before. So that's really, really good. Nice. Um, that means I'm, I'm, I'm interested. What game do you play? I play League of Legends. Ugh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Uh, I don't even play Bye. it at a high level. I just I'm uh, to be fair. Bye. Sometimes <laughs> I, I'm not a very I'm not I'm not a very funny person. I'm not a very like I personally don't even see myself as that very that much interesting. Um, I mean to be fair, we have a podcast though, so <laughs> it's it's funny. But hopefully, I become more interesting as I as I do more of these podcasts and these Twitch streams, and I'm more able to uh show my intro or like you know be entertaining right your inner self yeah um but i don't think that i'm normally it entertaining and stuff so the, sh the twitch stream going as well as it did and me looking back on it and still seeing the humor in it um i i think that's a very big like triumph that i that i've been able to like hit and so i want to continue to do that Good. and i want to continue happy for to, you yeah i also need a video editor <laughs> Ooh, that's I, a lot. I can't. <laughs> like, I I could do like our podcast because it's not it's not as tough as like right like like video editing to the point where you're like chopping stuff up and like doing fun like interesting yeah. transitions and stuff like that. Like, I I don't have time for that. I have other things that I want to do and other things that I'm more passionate about. Like, I want to put the video on YouTube because I'm passionate about um entertaining people. But when it comes to the video creation. Like that's where it's like okay, I, it's it's that's more droning than anything. I'd rather just create the parts and then tell somebody to put it in that this specific order or put it in the order that makes them happiest. But I'm still making those parts if that makes any sense. It's like I'd, I'd rather be the d director rather than the yeah you know, the editor yeah the editor exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I'm looking for that. Because it is it is a it is a thing that I'm just not as passionate about as like I am with like music or programming and stuff like that. So, because I have again, my previous uh, uh, stream was really really good, and I'd really like to highlight it and put it on my channel. And I know that'd be a really good idea, but going into Premiere and being like, okay, time to cut this, away, and it's a two or three hour video. Yeah, you're trying to be the director. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I, I should still do it. Like I, I think we talked we talked about this last time. But I need to be a lot more, um, you know, forward with my with the things that I'm working on. Like with when it comes to YouTube, I need to be more on it because I think that I should worry about getting a a video editor in the future because of course like that's where I would be bigger and more known. I'm um, rather than you know harping on that now and not making any progress. You know. Yeah. Uh, that's basically it. That that was that was that was my week. It, it was cool. a very interesting week. It could have been bad, better. It could have been. I worse. feel like you have such a, you have always such a more like, eventful week than I do. My week, my weeks just, sadly they just like kind of all blur together at this mm. point in my life. So it's nice to hear somebody else's like week and the struggles you're going through. But mm. I will be thinking about you tomorrow. Hopefully that guy calls you at one thirty. Also. <laughs> 
we're recording this on april 3rd so april 4th god has risen people it's easter motherfucking sunday oh, so god has risen amen god bless sorry if you're religious and that offended you but god has okay also I'm sorry thing. if you if you are religious or not religious <laughs> No, if you're religious or not, I'm sorry if that offended you saying God has risen, but like <laughs> in the morning when I wake up, if my husband here is here, I'll be like, I have risen. Because <laughs> I'm just annoying as fuck. <laughs> and I just think it's funny. But um, anyways, I guess like that was a good, you like I said, you always have such a um, eventful week. Should we like move on to our topic of yeah. the week. Yeah, uh, go, go, uh, just, just finishing up with the week thing. But to be fair, like, t- I think two episodes ago, I was, it was just like a, it was also a blur for me. It was like, I'm just, I'm just remembering yeah. my week a little bit better. Just literally for these, <laughs> for these podcasts. Happy for you. <laughs> Cause, yes. Cause I, I feel an like interesting that's time. good though, hmm? you know? I feel like that's good. Even though if like our weeks do blur together, if we can at least remember like three exactly. new things that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly good for us yeah and and yeah. i and i have a i have a bunch of projects that i'm working on so there's always at least some updates somewhere mm-hmm. for the most part um okay good. but okay so today's topic um is actually going to be our or, or our early life um what we were when we were younger um or you know all about that type of stuff just the basic you know uh conversation about our early life i'm assuming we don't want to keep it too too long um but you know, yeah, nothing too crazy. Yeah, nothing too crazy. So Kelsey, how how was your early life? Tell me, um, tell me like your 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 evolution of the things that you wanted to be when you grew up, like yeah. the evolution. Yeah, the evolution. Because um, you know, there's always that one. You know, you always want to be like a oh, cop yeah. when you're a kid or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. what about yourself? Yeah. Okay. Weirdly, I kind of wanted to be like a mortician because <laughs> Interesting. I. I don't know why it came up. I just, I think it might be from, like, my mom watching, like, NCIS and, like, you see all, like, the dead mm. people. But I just thought it was just, like, really interesting. Like, we're all going to die and you can either get cremated and be turned into ashes or you can have an open casket and look like bomb as fuck and everyone just looks at you and says, I'll miss them or mm. I love them. And, like, you know, I just think that process is cool. Like, the way that they can really make somebody that was dead, like look like they're just fucking just sleeping in a casket i remember the last open casket i went to the lady was like really old but i remember grew i remember her like just growing up because she was like one of those like weird staple older people in my life like a grandmother figure and i saw her in her casket and i was like damn to my sister like she looks really fucking good like Mm -hmm. they it literally just looks like she's sleeping so i think that's always just like really fascinated me just that whole like thing but then i looked into it and then i also was like oh i have kind of a wheezy stomach and Mm. it's a business that you kind of have to be like born into and it's like a small network and then i just moved on to like art and i wanted to be a graphic designer but then i realized i think i talked about this earlier how it when it no longer is fun to me and it's to me it's like at the internship i had i felt like oops all i was doing was staring at a screen and i don't think my eyes are built for that and it's like all my like creativity i was just like pumping it out from like nine to five so it's like by the time i got to 12 o'clock my brain just felt like straight up mush like and i felt like i was just doing the same design over and over because like my creativity just like was out of 10 when i first started then i went to one so oops i keep hitting this sorry so i just feel like I didn't really like that anymore like yeah it's cool like to do something you love but it's like after you do it so many times your your love for it kind of diminishes as you see it's just like a repetitive task so I feel like that's also too why I love that we have this podcast because I can do our, I can run our Instagram and it's really stress-free and I can just like kind of make cool weird designs that only like I have to approve of because like you're just that's not like what your your facet of this podcast is for so like that's really why i like this podcast but anyways that's a rant but it's just like then i was like eh, like this is cool but like i don't think i could do this forever like my brain just hurts i i feel like i'm not being like creative enough anymore so then i just went back to college and i got a degree for business administration i had a job 
for as an office admin in Florida before I left and I really loved it. I did some really light bookkeeping and I thought it was pretty interesting and then going back to college again after getting an A in graphic design, I was like, oh wow, accounting is actually pretty cool. I thought about becoming like a CPA, but honestly, I freaking hate school so much, which is like my, like my vice, I guess, but mm -hmm. yeah. So now I'm like kind of looking into like bookkeeping with this new job. I think numbers are actually pretty interesting when it's like real world, like people's finances and just like everything that goes into that and using like QuickBooks. So I evolved from mortician to graphic designer to like bookkeeper slash like I'm fine being an office admin or to like the business side of like life. Cause I just think too, like there's so much interesting stuff about like the business world that you don't know about. And yeah, I think that's just how like my overall like career has evolved. And I think as a person too, I've like evolved in the sense that i grew up in a baptist church growing up and i was literally like the only minority except for obviously my sister and then this other african-american girl looking back is like kind of weird and then i was more like progressive like no like denomination church and then i kind of just like fell out of religion because i just honestly realized like it's not for me and i understand like the community part which i kind of miss sometimes but then i don't because it's just like to me church is like low-key like drama and like capitalism and they get tax breaks and we don't even know what's gonna happen when we die so i, th I think that's just like my evolution as a human you know just i still love god but i'm not like hardcore into like church and going like honestly like staying home on sundays is like straight up amazing because like hello yeah. why not but um yeah that's like my small like evolution and I think too just like being more i'm still like a very quiet person but also now through working customer service i've maybe maybe not i don't know i just went to a social setting but it's like even then i still am just very quiet into myself unless i like find somebody but at least i know how to like start a conversation keep the conversation going how to smile mm -hmm. and yeah nice to meet you blah 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 like so yeah, I think those are my three like evolutions, my career evolution, my religious evolution, and my my social yeah. evolution. <laughs> okay. What about you? What are your three evolutions? My, okay, so my career evolution would be, I first wanted to be a, a multilinguist um, because I Ooh. was, yeah, I was, um, I was dual enrolling, not dual enrolling, but I was, and, um, I was taking classes in Spanish as well, so I Ooh. actually, uh, fun fact, I technically, I used to be a child, like, um, um, fluent in Spanish, like, I used to be, like, as if I was born what? in, like, Spain, yeah, I used to be able to speak Spanish yeah. as though I was, a, I was a child who was born in Spain, um, Damn. or probably, Big like, flex. Mexico, but, um, uh, but yeah, I, I used to, yeah, I, I learned a lot. I, I, I learned Spanish. And so everybody would t say, oh, hey, you should be a, uh, a multilinguist. And so that was kind of like my mm -hmm. idea in my head. Um, Interesting. When I went, uh, ironically enough, when I ended up going down to Florida, I ended up losing it at all because I never used it. Um, and the irony Aww. was that, see, like in Florida, in Florida, that was where like a lot of the Hispanics were. We, we had like the yeah. most like Hispanic people around us, but um, because it was never necessary and it wasn't like um, the schools didn't have it because I was being taught in Spanish. So that's how I was learning it. Not like I wasn't even being taught Spanish more. I was just being taught in Spanish. Mm. So math class yeah. would be just completely Spanish. I think I had history in math as well uh, or, or hi history in Spanish as well, um, which is a really good like formula, honestly, because I think that's like the best way to learn a language is to uh, is to kind of integrate it into just your normal and everyday life rather than making it this like completely different thing so that like yeah like yeah. a chore yeah exactly um so yeah at first i wanted to be multilingual and then my brother he was a, a violinist and everybody loved to watch my brother play the violin <laughs> so um and they would always i would always be the one who was living in the shadow because i was always like i never did any musical instrument so people would ask me like oh hey what do you do and i'm like i don't really do anything and they're like okay <laughs> and then they go back to my brother and i always felt really really sad about that 
so um for for quick time i wanted to be like a musician of some sort um but then after a while i was like all right i don't have the time or patience for this so i'm gonna go over to the next best thing or the thing that like i kind of you know knew that i was into but i didn't really know that i kind of wanted to go further into it which was art like I, I, I actually like to draw and stuff like that so in my early life i love to just do like do doodles and on my uh, homework or my like um or my um my my notes for class i would always like do like these really weird like pictures or whatever uh and, and you could never see a picture of uh, a like a piece of paper of mine without just like these just the borders of the entirety of the paper being completely like drawn over and stuff like that so i went further into into art and then i enjoyed it i, I enjoyed the time that i spent with it but unfortunately i decided at a very young age to go into this thing called deviant art and on deviant art you okay. see all of these amazing 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 people and their abilities to just just draw so well and i ended up being extremely um uh, um uh, what's the word uh, intimidated by this i did not feel like i was gonna be very good at it because you know i saw these other people being so amazing and then i saw where i was at and i was like there's no way that i can get to there um f fun fact later in life i ended up regretting that decision but i ended up dropping it because of that i was like i'm not gonna get i'm nowhere near as good as i want to be and it doesn't seem like i'm growing as fast as i'd like to um and i guess i i really quick i learned that like recently the the reason why i'm like at, I'm, I'm i'm doing music now even though i've never had like a music like a real music class or um thing in, in my entire life the reason why now even though i know that i'm bad that i'm continuing on is that I'm, i learned that just because i'm bad now like no matter what as long as you practice you are progressing the problem is is that progression is logarithmic so the further you go, like the further you get more and more, or, or you learn more and more, the the steeper it gets for to see your progression. So just like the logarithmic line starts to get starts to get more and more, uh, actually not steep, more flat. The logarithmic line gets more and more flat. It's always descending. It's continuously descending. But um, the the increments that it's descending in gets shorter and shorter. So although you are progressing, you don't see the progression as much as you saw when you first started. And so before when I was, you know, when I was doing art, I didn't really know that. So I just kind of like, I was like, oh no, I'm just not progressing at all. Now I know it's just like, oh, just cause I don't see any progression doesn't mean that it's not there. So I'm a little bit more, I have a little bit more heart to it now. So now I'm, I, I, I want to stick to it more. Cause I know that no matter what I'm going to progress as long as I just keep doing it. Anyway, so that was art. <laughs> art took over the majority of my life. Um, and then I just started, I didn't know what I wanted to be after art. Uh, I kind of wanted to do architecture cause it had something to do with art. But again, that all that, that, uh, ended when all of those dreams ended. Um, and then I just knew that I wanted to do something with technology because my brother, I used to uh, take my PSP and like hack it and uh, get it to let me play like, nice. like games that I never nice. bought. <laughs> And so, like, Fuck yeah. yeah, it was it was really really dope being able you to. You illegal that. hacker, you yeah, right? Uh, I do. I did so <laughs> much things to that PSP. Um, it was great. It was God. it was the time of my life, honestly, being able to like <laughs> learn new things to do with the PSP and to be able to get games for free and stuff like that. It just felt so great uh, to be able to do that. And so my brother, he introduced me by saying like, "Hey, you might want to do something when it comes to you know robotics or something like that." And I didn't even think that that was even possible at the time. So then I went to the same high school that he went to because his high school um, had a robotics club in it. And so I was like, I want to try it. And so I thought I wanted to do machining. So that means like building the stuff. But then I later learned that I wanted to do more programming stuff. Um, and I learned programming there and then boom, I, I flourished into this kid who just really loved programming and, and took all day and all night learning Aww. programming. And then I got went to college and then I am who I am today, learning programming. Love it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a programmer, and then later down the line, I got depressed and started wanting to do music. Boom. <laughs> now right. we're here where we are today. Same. <laughs> um, that that's basically that. my my the, the career thing. Uh, I'm lucky to be as um, ADHD when it comes to the things that I like um, as I am. That because, is a good quality. Yeah, because I know so many things, and that's what I kind of. I used to be very afraid of that when I was younger, 
Um, the fact that like I didn't really know how, I, I wasn't um, I was never a master at one thing I just knew a bunch of just different things um, so I used to think that that was all like just the worst you know quality so it's just like you can never you know you're never going to be great at just one thing but now I enjoy it because now I have so many avenues to express myself in so when one is like when one annoys me or when I'm fed up with one I can just jump to the other yeah you move and on it to the other feels perfectly yes. fine Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Like, um, even though I like weirdly evolved from art to like business in a way, mm -hmm. it's like I love crafting so much. Too. It's just, like another weird tangent, sorry, but it's like yeah, I feel the same. Like I love crafting, so it's like if I find something I want to make, like I can at least know how to make the gist, like the basics of it, because I have so many weird wheelhouses of things I know how to do. Because mm -hmm. hobbies are great for that reason. Yeah. Yeah yeah exactly um i again that's that's the thing that the depression taught me <laughs> was just like how oh important it is that that i, that I have hobbies yeah. and that i'm able to hobbies. do that um good yeah so, so that was that was uh biz that was like uh um uh, why don't I say company uh that's career evolution then there's religious evolution All right. interestingly enough uh, i think i've said this before but i don't know if it was in a podcast that it actually aired but Interestingly enough, I was actually never, I had never been religious in my entire life. My mother and oh, was very, very religious. I, I grew up in a very extremely religious household, um, but I all, it was always something off about it to me. Um, even when I was like the yeah. youngest, I, I could have been, um, I used to always question things and question the validity of mm -hmm. things that I read. Um, again, that's also something that I take a lot of pride in is that like, I'm never the type of person to just go into you're a not a follower yeah exactly i i, I always love to ask yeah. questions um i like that which which kind of fucks me over sometimes but <laughs> <laughs> yeah I bet. Uh, but other but times, i think that's a good quality yeah exactly um i think that there's always i think there needs to be everybody every type of person like there needs to be the, the type of people to yeah. ask questions and then also needs to be those types of people who will stick to that and then you know go forward with it because um, mm -hmm. sometimes in uh, in like advancements you might either not you, you might uh, you have a lot of people who can question that advancement and say like like you know let's say the the model of the uh of the uh of space a long time ago before galileo right where we were like oh you know uh we thought that this i think we thought that the sun revolved around us or something like that i don't remember um but then you have the two types of people you have galileo who was probably like I don't know about that. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then you have the other type yeah. of person who. Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, then you have the other type of person who, although probably didn't question it, but continued to develop on top of it. it yeah. Yeah, yeah, both of these people I think are equally important because although this person didn't question it, um, he worked with what he had and built on top of it. And then the questioner questioned it, and they changed the system. And both of these people helped either in the present or in the future. Um, I just hate the people that want to stifle either one of those types of people. So if you if you think that, oh, you know, like this person who, who asks why, like, how dare you ask why in this situation? Like, you know, how, yeah, how dare you? Like those types of people, I hate those types of people. And the types of people who are like, oh, people who just fucking, like, how can you th believe this? You're, you're stupid, you're uh, horrible to, to like continue to work on top of this. I also don't like those people either. Um, I, I think that it's very important that the, the, both people exist. I think that that's the only way that I functioning society will work anyway i used to question a lot um so i was always you know questioning and then at first i was a, i was an atheist so i did not believe in god at all um all the questions just were way too vague and none were very an were answered that well and nobody would answer them to me well and so because of that i was like there then there this obviously just can't exist right because like these people who are saying that they know everything they, they know about this stuff they can never give me the answers that i want so obviously it seems like they don't know um but then as i grew and i grew a little bit older i found that being an atheist was the same thing in my head as being a theist which was that you you're saying to yourself i know for a fact that this is true and those people who think otherwise are stupid and i don't know how they can think like that i think that, that i think that both of these sides like can't, like they're not for me i'm the type of person who questions everything so why would i be on one side that says like oh there's absolutely no way that this exists when you know you don't know that you don't know that for sure either 
Like you don't, know. I don't know how this world works. I don't know how any of this shit works. So why would I, you know, say that I know a hundred percent fact that this is how the world works. I can't say that. So uh, on that thought, I decided I was like, okay, maybe I'm not um, atheist. Maybe I don't like just completely disagree with the idea of God and stuff like that. So I am now, um, and probably for the, for the very, very far future, um, I'm, I'm agnostic. Um, now, which is um, okay. just that I, I am open to the belief and I will never ever say that like, you know, one side is either absolutely correct or absolutely incorrect, unless of course evidence is given, which I don't think that is a possibility of that happening. Um, but, you know, yeah. That, so then, yeah, I turned from an uh, atheist to agnostic and that's basically where I am today. I'm still agnostic. I love talking about it. I love having debates with people about it on, on either side. I think it's, uh, oh, <laughs> I think both sides are very fun to talk oh, about. Um, I'm a debater. I love talking about things um, and, and seeing the, the thought process of somebody behind something. Even if like, even if I disagree with the thing that I'm talking to somebody about, it's always important, I think, to under to actually like when you make up when you have a belief that the reasons for those beliefs follow i think it's very important that that uh, that exists that like every belief that you have there's something behind it that makes it um uh that there's something behind it that makes sense for you to believe in that way like i think there are people who hate you know certain types of people for a reason and there are people who hate certain types of people for no reason at all and i'd rather talk about the talk to the people who hate them for a reason than the people who hate them for no reason i i i yeah like i think that you need something behind it to that way like let's say you are wrong you can know why you're wrong if you just hate something for no reason there's no way for you to you know know if you're wrong or not like if, if somebody asks like you know somebody if somebody asks you like oh hey like why do you hate squash? And you're just like, I don't know, I just hate it. Yeah, you know. Where does that conversation go? Reason. Yeah, <laughs> what's your reason? Yeah. It's like, oh no, I just hate. Like when when somebody says like, oh no, I just hate it, then you're just like, well, then there's no dip. Like, I don't know how to go from that. Like, you don't have a real reason. Yeah, you don't have a real reason. You just like, dislike it. Which, uh... to be fair, it's very very important that I you that I do note down that it is. It sh you should be very honest with yourself though that I am. 100% down to say if there is something that I just completely that I just agree with just because I agree with it but I will never defend that thing to like like the end of earth I guess you would say like if I don't know yeah I will never defend something that I'm like less than like 70% really sure about. yeah exactly yeah. like I like let's if you don't know hard facts yeah. <laughs> like you can't defend it exactly so like <laughs> if somebody comes up to me and they're like oh you look uh um you believe in gravity then what is gravity and like blah blah then i'm gonna say well i like, yeah <laughs> i don't know the entire intricacy Google. i don't know the entire intricacies of gravity not at all there's i i, I can't i don't have the, the the knowledge for that nor do i have the you know the education to do that therefore all i can do is just accept what people who are smarter than me have to say so that's one of those things where it's like, hey, if somebody smarter than me comes to me and says one day, like, oh, hey, did you know that actually gravity does not exist? Then I'm going to be like, OK, dude, what's your evidence? I see your evidence. All right. I guess gravity doesn't exist. Like, I'm, I'm OK. I'm OK with, with with acknowledging that, like, this thing right here, I'm not actually 100 percent on. Therefore, I'm not going to defend it because I don't know. I don't know 100 um, percent. I don't know if that was the best. Uh, uh, um, uh, example of that but yeah it's just like yeah I, I i take pride again in uh not in being able to say i don't know this thing or being able to say yeah like accepting that yeah ac like, accepting my ignorance accepting you don't know all the facts exactly. like you just don't people and if you don't know all the facts you're not gonna fucking debate so exactly people are so <sighs> scared of just ex admitting that they just don't know something they don't know or yes. that they're wrong or they're telling <laughs> fake yeah they're literally saying fake news to a person like that's the one thing that just like blows my mind mm -hmm. like like, if I don't know anything about whatever you're talking... Like, if you were debating with somebody in the room that I'm just sitting in, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say anything. It's not just because, like, I'm ignoring it. I'd be listening. But it's, like, I don't have any genuine facts to give to this conversation. Mm. And it's your debate. So, like, I'm going to sit back and just mind my business. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I respect that in you. Like, if you don't know, like, at least 75%, 
don't be talking trash exactly about. don't even talk about yeah, it Yeah, exactly exactly yeah I, I just it's it's insane to me like there's so many times that even sometimes in an argument there there are some arguments that you can win but you just have to agree that you don't know something but then people yeah, are just so you don't know all of stubborn it. that they just refuse mm -hmm. to accept like oh you know like yeah i don't know that one either. you're not in an encyclopedia yeah exactly like, come on uh yeah so we're just humans living exactly so that that's that's basically my my uh thoughts on like religion it's just that like i understand that i don't know all about it so therefore i'm nice. not going to I like that assume, uh, yeah i'm not going to go 100 percent on it so yeah that's yeah that, that's how i was before uh, that's how i went from being an, uh, an atheist as a kid interestingly never cool. being leaving in god really um until being <laughs> um until uh being an agnostic uh what was it what was the next uh, evolution that you had I did career, religion. Oh, social. Social. Oh, yo. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, keep it, keep it in five sentences. I just want to hear that from you. Yeah. Okay. Five sentences. Go. All right. So I'm gonna to keep talk. it short. <laughs> Let's just say I was a very, very not well socialized child. Because as I was young, I would I was I was very much so like uh, bullied and shunned and stuff like that by uh, people in school and even sometimes by like my own like uh, uh, relatives. I had relatives who also mm. kind of like pushed me to the side and stuff like that, mainly because of the way that Aww. I spoke. Um, because um, my relatives were very are very southern, and so I obviously do not speak in a southern accent. So when you're when you go to a southern place and you speak very very yeah. like proper and stuff like that, they they take that as being very you know um, haughty. You're already outcast. Yeah, you're you're an outcast because they think that you're talking below that you're talking above them. Um, yeah. So I would I would get shunned by those people. I'd get shunned by my friends, and so because of that, I grew up very very like not well socially developed until high school is when I got all that together. And I decided all right, I'm gonna stop being a weirdo. And so I decided to become an extreme weirdo freshman year. <laughs> and then now, that. And, yeah, and then I have all these like <laughs> these cringe oh, moments in my head that we, we will go over in previous in, in next episodes of podcasts in the future. But uh, I used to be super, super cringy freshman year. And then luckily, as the years were going on, I got way more chill, way more socialized. Um, and now I think that I could basically hang out, hang with anybody. <laughs> so the, the only thing that I will add is a very, very funny thing that I did when I was in freshman year that, although very, very strange, but it, it worked so well, which was I used to study Vine um, in that I had okay, nothing to- Okay, keep that to <laughs> Keep that. We'll save that for another podcast. Uh, okay, wait, hold on. Because it's quick. It's just quick. It's just that I used okay. to study Vine and- uh because i had nothing to talk to people about and um vine always had the most popular thing so by watching vine videos you get you get all the jokes and you get all these things that people True. are talking about and so i would literally go to vine just so that i'm able to say all right what can i talk to people about today and so yeah that that, that was that was my social journey was being completely completely okay. anti-social like and now being I'm. A, I feel like I'm a pretty much a butterfly. I can hang out with anybody. I can make people feel very Aww. important. I can, you know, talk yeah, to I people. Yeah, I can see that. Although I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> also, same though. Same, same, same. <laughs> I can. I can. I'd hang. rather just sit in the corner. Yep. <laughs> uh, I can hang when I need to hang, but in the most part, I'm like, I'd rather just be at home. I love my roommates my because they're very similar to me in that, like, I, I'm like, I'm very, Good. I'm a. They social, understand your boundaries. I'm a social cat. In that I will come yes, out and I'll be like, same. hey, I want to talk to you. And I start talking to you for like 10 to 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, I'm like, I want to stop talking to you. <laughs> and they're <laughs> and they're very much the same. Me and my me and my roommate, uh, Brandon, are the, are the closest when it comes to that. We're like, sometimes we'll be talking. We'll be having a conversation. And then one of us just doesn't want to talk to any, talk anymore. And then we're just like, OK, I'm done talking. And then we're like, OK, okay bye. <laughs> yeah, and bye. And then we just go to our separate ways. That's it. I love that. <laughs> I, oh, I, love I like really like that. I'm a social cat. I'm, I might use it as their title because it's like I think that describes us perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, we're both social cats, exactly. but I, I'm married and my husband. Social out both. cats. Sorry, continue. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we can both just sit on the couch and not talk to each other and we're not bothered by I, it so that's what i love that i love that uh yeah me too i love that vibe mm -hmm. your roommate <laughs> yeah roommate uh that's kind of what i want to what i wished in a uh significant other in our room um, <laughs> is that, yeah is that you can both be... just sit in silence sitting in silence and being and being comfortable yes. with just being alone yeah. and being okay with it yeah yeah, yeah yeah definitely look for that in your future yeah, your future sure. spouse if you can both sit in silence while you're dating like that's a sign that you might want to marry them but you never know people change in marriage because it's like you're straight up living with somebody yeah i love my husband very, so very much but yeah thing, yeah i yeah i've yeah yeah, yeah i've yeah. made that mistake we'll get into that later pretty sure we'll get into that little topic later hold up uh when did you move on with 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 your husband if you don't mind me asking um just the year let's just keep this brief yeah, just... okay uh so we dated like 20 in 2016 and i creepily just like moved in with him and his apartment with his roommate and his roommate was like so nice about it like didn't really care because okay. i wasn't like super obnoxious but yeah like i'd say end of 2016 and we got married 2017 so okay oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i was just gonna yeah. say it because i i thought that i would have probably uh i moved in with my with my uh with my ex one very early like i think between the first like two weeks that we knew each other um but uh yeah, it was just I, I, I was going to say that I, I, I might have moved in with them before you moved in with your uh, with your uh, with your husband. Um, but that's not the case. You moved in way before. Uh, but yeah. when it comes to timing <laughs> and how long we knew each other, I probably probably moved in a lot earlier. Yeah, <laughs> mm, I'd say mine was like kind of the same as like we were dating for at least like. Well, no, no, knew each other. Three... Oh, just straight up knew, knew each yeah. other. Yeah, we like, met like two mm. weeks before. Yeah, no. We decided to start before, living not. together. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, honestly, no. it wasn't even two weeks. I, I'm pretty sure it was like a week and a half. <laughs> Jesus, that's too much. I, but no. Yeah, it was a bad but my idea. thing is though too, like he had a weird like schedule. Of, like he'd work like four days and have two days off. But like the four days he worked, he'd work um like a, like either like nine p.m. to like five a.m. or like nine a.m to 5 p.m or like 11 or like 10 at night to like i don't know like five or something so like he had really weird shifts like very very weird shifts so it's like i'd see him he'd work four days and have two days off so it's not like a consistent like he didn't have a really quote-unquote consistent schedule but like we'll talk about that later yeah. like mm -hmm. yeah but um anyways i think that was a good like Good, like, religious evolution, career evolution, and social evolution that we just talked about for, like, our early lives until, like, up until now. So should we... I don't even want to ask this. Should we move on to this movie yeah, recap? Yeah, let's which go is with the movie recap. Crip. <laughs> I feel like you already hate it, but um, our movie recap is for Crip Camp, and it is on Netflix, and... It is a documentary movie style about the disability revolution and a 2020 American documentary. And yeah, it's pretty much a, revolves around a camp called Crip Camp that was in upstate New York City. And cool. it was a camp in the early 70s for what called? Janae? people with disabilities. Yeah, um, Janae. Yeah, like Janelle, Janelle Janetta, Janette. I think it was like a DNA or something. I like think Janed. Yeah, it was Janed. I think it was something. Yeah. Damn Janed. Yeah. But yeah, it was like Janed. It's an upstate camp in. Um, oh, God. It was like camp in upstate New York City in like the early 70s. And it follows the, I'd say about like five main people. So let's get into the questions. Right. Shall we? Shall we get into them? Yeah. You ready? Yep. All right. So. The first question is, do you know somebody with a disability? Um, do I know somebody with a disability? Uh, so when it got a disability related to like somebody who would be in crimp camp or in Camp Janaid, um, or just in general, what? Just in general. Just, like, I, okay. Cause like, cause I technically in a technically ADHD is a disability. 
So, yeah. so like, do I know, like, I know a lot of people with like different types of disabilities like those, but do I know like somebody who, yeah, I think my, I think my ex would have probably been able to be in one of those like camps, but not like for any of the really, like, it wasn't bad at all. Like it was like, yeah, the, the, the difference is that my ex was completely able to function in society and be a, be like regular for the most part until like their brain decided to be stupid. <laughs> but for the most part, they were able to completely speak normally and they looked very normal. So in, in the way that they, yeah. they uh, my, my ex is, didn't have like a physical. Disability. Yeah. There was no physical disability. Um, and in society, okay. my ex would be looked at favorably amongst the uh, disabled people, but they were very disabled. Um, like that that seems that sounds kind of bad they, they were they were pretty disabled they were disabled in that like they had like okay. um bipolar disorder and uh different yeah. things like that like dep and depression and stuff like that so mm -hmm. uh, yeah i know somebody uh, okay. who was disabled and one thing that i can say is that something that i learned dating them and kind of resonated with the movie is just that there are so many things that are just not built for disabled people that you're just yes. like that's how i feel too you're obviously like this needs to be fixed like how how do they not yeah. help like i'm i'm lucky to have like been able to experiencing it experience it like through somebody else through my ex um and like being like oh, okay like these are the things that these people have to deal with um experience adapt and to. adapt to and, and stuff like that and like that that kind of like mm -hmm. feeling uh, of other people judging them and all that other stuff that's also something that's super, super important. Um, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so I do know someone. I probably know a couple more people, but the mo the, the the one who has made the most change in my life, both positively and negatively, would be my ex. Um, when it comes to the disabled person, so that would probably be my answer to that question. So, okay. Yeah. Um. um what about yourself? Interesting. Okay. Um. I would honestly say no, um, I, or yeah, maybe a real hard no, but like, I know growing up in the Baptist church I went to, there was a child that, um, had a disability, I don't remember what it was, but it was like more of a physical disability where like, you could see it, uh, so, and you know, I always tell like everybody loved him and like the church loved him and his family loved him, but really in my life like i really don't know anybody that has like a true like physical disability that like makes it harder for them to live in society because not everything's like so accessible but yeah. that i guess just goes into the next question is like how has this movie changed the way you view accessibility uh, for me, not actually much at all. Um, again, I've had, <gasps> really? yeah, I've had, I've, I, I, I know I've spent a lot of time with people, um, like be, who were around who had disabilities. Um, and it, so yeah, like something that I noticed in the movie was how little I thought people, uh, with disabilities of very differently than I, like for me and so there's, there's like two parts to this is one for me for the most part somebody who's like disabled and like and, and stuff like that they're very very normal to like to me to me they're just like another person they have their own problems and i don't really care <laughs> like in mm -hmm. that way like i i would be considered the person that most likely disabled disabled people like me most because i just don't care because you're just another human being to me so I will treat you like another. Yeah, you don't treat you. them differently. Exactly, they're just like you see them on like an equal level or an equal field. Yeah. Of For, life. And to be fair, I, I but I, I and I want to be extremely fair in that saying that, but that doesn't mean that I don't exist without bias. Um, and that I do note that, like, I do note that I do have like shortcomings when it comes to uh, disabled people, and that like there is a line. So a person who you know, um, I think in in the um, um in the what am i trying to say yeah in, in the in the documentary the i forgot her name but she was like i think she probably had the most speaking not the not the one who is the the the, sh the, the shorter one in the wheelchair but the uh, one who had a husband who, who i think they both had was it palsy oh yeah they had cerebral, cerebral palsy, palsy. Yeah. yeah so cb yeah cb so for me the sexual active like, yeah yeah masters <laughs> queen yeah uh <laughs> And for me, when I if if I were to speak to that person, 
Like, uh, the only thing that I would have in my head is how slowly they talked and how probably annoying that would be. <laughs> um, but that would be it. Like, there would there wouldn't be any like, oh, like I wouldn't want them to touch me or I wouldn't want to be around them or anything. Like that. Oh like, yeah, they, no. There's same. none of that thought. Like, it would literally just be like what I would think towards a normal person. Like, okay. Like, okay, all right, what are yeah, you trying to say? Just like, Something along those lines. They're just slower. Yeah, and I don't... In speech. And I would I would hope that I would never, um, like, try to push away those people in my life. Because I don't think that I would cause, because of the type of person that I am. Um, so that is true. But to be fair, going into the movie, I did have the that, that kind of, like, notion of, I kind of don't want to have to see a bunch of people who are suffering, uh, and like, I yeah, I, I don't want to. Yeah, like, you want it to be like an uplifting movie, not a like sad. The pro see, okay, so the problem with disabilities is that it's important to take to to make you know lemonade out of lemons, but it's also very important to understand what you're making, like like what you're using to make it, right? So. The, the unfortunate part is that my, with, when it comes to my ex, I always say it's very it was very hard for me to tell them that their life did not suck ass because like, especially since they had depression. So like when they come yeah. to me and they say, hey, my life fucking sucks and you're supposed to be the very uplifting person on the other side and try to kind of like, because of course, when somebody, when a, another human being has like doubts about their life, you want to... Uh, help them out and you want to make them you know feel better about it but i'm the i'm a realist person unfortunately um and that i'm not going Same. to i'm never going to lie to somebody so the very so uh, a, a contention in like my relationship with them was just how hard it was to like not just like be like or it, how hard it was to just like it was not, hard to be like look you're depressed. I get it. We all get depressed, but like, well, you can't no. use this as a crutch. No, it wasn't like that at all. No, it was more too like hard. literally everything wanted to kill my ass. <laughs> what? Everything <laughs> wanted to kill them. That's they too had much. allergies to like everything. Um, uh, uh, like they had like, um, oh, what is God. it? Like, I'm sorry, but like, medic what? Yeah, the medication to to help their um, like, uh, their their depression was a depression no no, no. The, so, cause they also had schizophrenic uh, they were also schizophrenic okay. just a slight schizophrenic and so like the, the the medicine to help their schizophrenia would would like completely like make them either what? go blind um not be able to get out of bed literally just be in like a vegetable state um or yeah. just a bunch of just different things like that um they were allergic to like weed which was insane to me and i never knew that that existed um like mm, there were so many, okay. there, it, it, it was so much stuff that was just against them. And it was just kind of like, well, fuck. Yeah. Your life kind of does suck. <laughs> and like, it's like, There's... I want to make your life as good as possible, but unfortunately you're never going to have to, you're, you're never going to be able to experience the same things that I'm able to experience the same way that I'm able to experiencing them. And unfortunately that does suck a lot. And so when I got when I got into this movie, the one thing I didn't want to see is just people saying, "Oh no, like it's the same." My life sucks. Yeah, no, no, no. it's yeah. like it, it's the same. Everybody's the same. You should be happy, and uh, you shouldn't acknowledge the fact that. Yeah, like just move on, like deal with it, like brushing over the fact that like they have to overcome yeah. other things that we, as normal people with that don't have like physical disabilities like don't have to yeah overcome. exactly yeah acknowledge I, I just didn't yeah i didn't want to go through a movie that just completely blatantly ignored the obvious like oh no they they still have to deal with that type of shit like yeah this person still has to like i think they they'd had that uh that that part in the end where they were all like you know uh, climbing up the stairs the problem is is that oh my god yes <laughs> they still have to do that like they they, they still are yeah. going to have to go through that and un like it, and it seems like there's almost it's relatively nothing that you can do that's going to help everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so it hasn't it hasn't changed my view of, of accessibility. It did it did okay. play with access. It did explain accessibility a lot better than I than I hoped that it would. Um, I, it did kind of portray that kind of like oh yeah they but they still yeah. have a lot of problems that they're dealing with and they have to because that's very very important um, because unfortunately 
as much as I would love for us to be able to just take those people and just solve all their problems. Cause that's in my brain. That's what my brain said. Like when I saw that, I was just like, I just wanted to be able to just snap my finger and help them out. Like snap my finger and say, know, you, right? can no, you no longer <laughs> have to deal with this anymore. But as much as that's the case, that's not the, like, that's not the case. <laughs> like It's not the reality. That's not the reality. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, they, the, the movie did a good job with that, with not, you know, making it, oh, yeah, everything, showing, everybody had lived happily yeah. ever after, even though they did kind of get to it's that. It's like the point. world, I guess, like kind of, but it's like, I guess this is me answering the question, but it's like, to me, this show me like the world is literally not accessible to everyone. So like at my, just even thinking too, like when I check out at like Target, and or well, when dixie and i have to put my card in it's like what if someone's in a wheelchair like and they can't literally reach the card thing like why is it not lower or like why can't it be adjustable because i know it's like hammered to the countertop or even at like my now older job it's like yeah there's like a pin pad that is lower and people that don't have a physical disability or in a wheelchair they always complain like i can't see the pin pad and i'm like well in my head i'm like for ada americans with disabilities act it's implemented for this reason for businesses but i'm also like there's like a it's like a kiosk so like you can touch it but it's like if i was literally four foot and i touched this i couldn't i could not be able to even reach like the tickets i needed to purchase because it's way too high so it's like yes um businesses follow like ada but it's like also they don't in a way it's like they're half-assing it so to me after watching this movie i was just like businesses really need to like up their accessibility level because like not everyone's five foot some people are only like four like straight up only like four foot yeah. so like what are you gonna do to help them like there has to be like some change and i think really this movie just like opened my eyes more to accessibility and also to just being more patient with people even if they don't have like a physical uh disability but more of like a mental maybe if they have like just slower speech or like whatever and just like remembering to like you said like everyone is human so like you should treat them as human you don't need to like roll out a red carpet but just being like patient and just yeah literally just having patience like i feel like that's all people need to do is have patience and understanding that like we are all just humans and some people aren't considered in their eyes or in society's eyes as like quote unquote like normal and like they just have to go over some hurdles and maybe they do talk slower and mm -hmm. just like are in a wheelchair so like just help them as a normal person just have more patience and yeah that's just like my spiel on the like how this movie changed the way you feel view accessibility so yeah it just kind of opened my eyes more and just overall i just hope people just have like whoever watches this movie just have more patience for like everyone else mm -hmm. because Patience goes like a very long way and saying thank you and yes sir and yes ma'am. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's my customer service and disability accessibility spiel. But, yeah, um, but yeah, it's yeah. It's it's very important and and I guess the like the last thing I want to end that on is just um well one. I, I one something is that I just absolutely like figured out which is how um handy like like not capable like every place is like again like like you said no like um we're not very very like um good at helping the the handicapped and um that's very very unfortunate with society and that that's something that i learned first hand with my ex uh, which was like how hard it was for certain things to get done for these people to get listened to because of course people who have yes. mental, mental disabilities people take people think of them as much lower and something that you have to understand is that they are that you have to be very very patient with these types of people um something that like even though like there were times that my my ex had times where they were they, they had like manic um times manic days where they were where, where they were manic even though that that time existed i didn't not listen to them like i always listened to them i always yeah, you're sat still down there for them. spoke to them as much as it sometimes like i ended up having to ruin my entire Japanese trip <laughs> um, not like I didn't have as much fun as I would have liked to simply because 
I thought I, I knew I didn't even think but I knew that this trip was less important than making sure that my significant other was okay so I would spend entire days out on the trip um, being on my phone out on the balcony of our of our, uh, of our hotel talking to them and making sure that they were very comfortable and listening to them and, and li like listening to their problems and stuff like that and uh, I don't I, of course I don't think that I was the 100% best that like I'm listening to people's problems because I'm the type of person who I am always I'm always trying to uh, optimize things. So if I if I hear a problem, I want to fix it. Um, so I know I'm not the best person to listen to. I, I'm not the best person to. But just the fact that you did listen to them on a trip. Yeah, but so, yeah, but I, in Japan, I did listen. I do listen. I listen, and although I try to amend, uh, although I try to amend, I do listen. And it's very important to listen to these yeah. people and to be very 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 patient. Um, that is true. Because. Even people who are wrong have some right things, you know, that they're saying. So listen to these people and then go about like the situation depending on that rather than just like ignoring what people are saying and then just being like, oh, throw it out. And that, no, you, you listen to me. Like mm -hmm. no one's going to listen to that. No one likes that. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what I learned from my, from my ex. And um, yeah, this movie didn't really do a lot of teaching for me but that's only just again because i had someone else who was very close to me who was basically a family um that i had to learn it from yeah, that's, yep that's just uh, yeah that's interesting uh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's all i have to say i'm sorry yeah that's all, that's all i have to say as well that kind of like it, it, it tapered yeah, down question two okay uh -huh. all right so what was the most shocking moment for you while you were watching this movie? Uh, the most shocking moment. I feel, did I write that? Did I end up writing it down? Uh, I don't know. Did you? No, I didn't end up writing it down. I don't okay. really know. Like nothing was really shocking. Um, I, there were there were times that I was very that I was very happy at the at what was going on in the movie. Um, I don't think I was ever shocked. I think everything just everything was just very everything made sense. Again, like I don't really see mm -hmm. oh, when I like when yeah when I look at people or I, or when I see people's like situations, I don't really get like surprised a lot by them, right? So I don't like see you know these people who are having who have dis disabilities. And when I see them on the screen, I'm I, I don't I I feel like I'd, I'm never really repulsed for the most part. Um, I feel like for the most part, it's just kind of like okay, there's this guy on the screen, they're talking, and that's kind of what it seemed the entire time. So I was either like really happy or really bored <laughs> during the movie. I don't there, there wasn't really any like surprising. Okay, I respect part. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about wow. yourself? Okay, um, or any surprising? I actually I actually was really surprised that they. I think it was like what almost. 30 days of a like sit in protest okay, that, at the that's fair. yeah like the california like senate building whatever whatever it was the like congress building like and like they literally went yeah they literally went to washington dc and there weren't like accessible vehicles so they all just sat in the u-haul truck in the dark and then like she was like talking to people and like the fucking senate like yeah. i just i i thought that was really interesting like why do they not teach this in like history because like this is such a big like uh it's a big law that businesses need to follow so like why and i didn't even know about this law until i literally went to college so i yeah i i thought that was so interesting like the whole like ada like how it just like vote for 504 it was something that didn't existed and it is now and it was also a fight and how like the black panthers like gave them food while they were like doing their like sit in and like nurses came and like showered them and like gave people like yeah like washed their hair and how they literally just had to sit in in the senate because like this motherfucker didn't want to fucking do anything yeah. so i i thought that was the most interesting part of this whole like movie just like the whole like how ADA is now a law. So I, I do want to amend my answer, which is I actually okay. <laughs> Black Panther. The, the Black Panthers thing was very surprising to me. Wasn't that interesting? Um, I, of course, it's it's something that today, um, what is it? It's something that 
I guess interests me today that kind of I, I, I that came up so I, I forgot what it was the reason for it was but but it was like the fact that like um the amount of like black people and like so okay so in the movie something that they realized that I realized too is that when you see other people being treated like you could be treated or you could have been treated or you were treated you know it should show it shouldn't sh um there shouldn't be any like animosity there it should be like you know f like some form of like kinship like oh hey we're dealing with the same problems let's work together yeah it's um, like allies working with allies exactly allies working with allies and t t interestingly enough i had that kind of like similar thought something uh, along those lines recently where it was like the the like the trans rights and all that type of stuff where like i see all i see a bunch of just these like like black people um and a lot of them are just are very uh, like angry and, uh, uh, there's like the china uh, that's what it was it was the chinese bullshit or rather the asian bullshit where people are like attacking asian people um and i see a bunch of like sometimes like in the headlines i see a lot of like black people doing it and i don't understand it because i i, I it's like isn't that what we're fighting against <laughs> like why, That's why what I'm are you saying too. Yeah, why are you you know putting the same thing onto other people that you yourself are saying, "Oh, I don't want that to happen to me." Why? It made me so mad seeing these people, seeing these people who are who are black and uh, I as my you know, I am also black for those who don't look at the pictures. Um, but it it it, it makes it feel it makes me feel shame when I when I see that cuz I'm yeah. like the these people in the leash we've come so far exactly what's what's going on how it feels yeah how it yeah. feels and how to like and not to do this so like mm -hmm. them going up to these but yet they're doing americans it. them going up to these mm -hmm. americans it, these and, and, asian americans not e i don't Why? give a fuck like i i hate that i i i personally like i mean it, you should of course like you know have some sort of like your culture behind it so that you understand your culture but as a black person i don't really have a fucking culture so all i want to hear is american i don't give a fuck like where mm -hmm. like your ancestors came from all i know yeah. is that my uh my, my 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 chinese friend who has a very very thick accent him and i love playing league and we like talking about the same exact <laughs> things and we like joking we like yeah. joking about the same exact things that's all i care about this per and like it, it just it just makes me so upset like seeing mm -hmm people americans i literally feel the same though because yeah. they don't believe oh you're yeah. not american enough or you look different than me Ugh, go yes. fuck yourself if you hurt Ugh, somebody so because annoying. Of the way they i hate you if you do that <laughs> i literally feel the fucking same though like as a asian american pretty much like whitewashed as fuck but it's still like why are we all like you said why are why is the african-american community the hispanic community the asian community why all of a sudden are the fucking Asian community getting fucking harassed, like straight up harassed mm. by everyone else. Like, are you fucking serious? Like, in America, we are all Americans and we just want to be equal. We all want to seen as equal humans, mm. but we fucking can't because everyone wants to fucking hate on one fucking race. And to me, it's like, why? Why are we doing this? We're setting our whole, our whole like generation is taking a million steps backwards when we should all be going a full step forward but now we're just all going forward and like i don't want to go into like a big rant but it's just like black lives matter it's a movement that needs to happen where the fuck is my asian lives matter <laughs> where is this why are we all fucking shoving like grandmas and grandpas what if someone shoved your grandma and grandpa on the streets you'd be fucking livid yeah. and you would hate that person so like why are you doing to the most vulnerable do it to the fucking losers on their phones all the time do it to somebody that's young that has good hips not someone that's old <laughs> and fragile has already lived a whole life like to me it's like you're the people that are doing this shit it's like you're a big fucking loser because one you're preying on the elderly who is already like weak as shit and two you're just a loser like just move on with your life this person has not affected you in any fucking way so like walk along you don't need to push them and literally kill them and commit like manslaughter so like 
move on aren't we all just trying to be equal humans living in a world that has like corruption and sin so like you're just adding more to it like why are you doing this to people like what do they have against you because they are fucking asian and look different from you and you already look different from like the quote white on white like person so like what is the point of all this like i do not understand it and yeah. it's just like another big rant but it's like what the fuck i'm so tired of this and like people always like disregard asians as like a fucking another race that doesn't get like harassment it's like i'm like so tired of this you're black white hispanic like everyone gets it so it's like why are we doing this to each other like literally why 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 in 2021 after covid like why are we doing this like to each other like why can't we all just actually rally together not be so fuck not kill each other yeah. and like just fucking live in harmony like the world is what it is like honestly to me it's like get over it move on stop killing each other's fucking grandmas and grandpas and each other like move on have respect for each other and go along your day you know so. something that i love the most is and you can hear it from anybody who i take take pictures with um which is i love when i take a picture and when i see a picture and it's just a bunch of people of just different like different like um cultures from different like yeah mm -hmm. different cultures backgrounds like, different backgrounds different. but like they're all together they're all having fun and they're all friends i mm -hmm. always say it and when i take a picture or like when i'm together with a bunch of people and i'm like this is america right here that's because that's yeah. what I I personally am the most patriotic person that I know. I am very I love I love 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 America. Like although we have a bunch of shit, of course, a hundred percent. But I think every everybody has shit. But I love the fact that I have a Chinese a Chinese best friend. I have a white best friend. I have a black best friend. I have uh, a Vietnamese best friend. I ha I have so many different types of just really good friends, and they're all from different places. And we can all like learn so many different things from people, so many different thought processes, so just so many different, just just so much difference. And I, I see that and I enjoy it. And I can't imagine just disliking somebody because just because um, they look different from you, because you think that they, that that the people who looked like them might have done something against your sub shit like that like i i i i, I watched this video from the try guys um and it was about asian hate uh, is like it's, i think it's just called like let's talk about asian hate um and it, it was talking about a lot of the things that um a lot a lot of like history in like schooling missed which was like a lot of like the the asian um like hate and stuff like that where um i think after i don't remember if it was world war one or world war two but uh that where like Asian people yeah, were just put, into into, yeah, were put, put into concentration in camps. California. Even Americans, even Americans were placed into these concentration camps. People who were there rightfully and who were actually part of the war, who actually were fighting for us and with us. Same, again, same thing with like, I think at World War One, which was insane for me with black people. It's just like, these people are still being like, people are still questioning their uh, loyalty when you're like putting your mm -hmm. life on the line to protect their country insane to me insane that you would question yeah. their loyalty um yeah I, I don't know i i i i'm just not i i hate that type of stuff i forgot how we got to I asian hate, hate from um <laughs> from mental disability even... but no <laughs> I literally matter don't know. it's probably off of you yeah yeah <laughs> no matter if you're asian or if you're disabled or if you're black or if you're white or anything like that i don't think that i don't think either one of those things to survey and i think that even now in the the public sphere um that's kind of get that kind of gets confused a lot where people are like oh that must mean that we can hate on white people as well and i'm like mm -hmm. no and like, it literally, means why stop are we hating, hating on everyone? anybody <laughs> it, i know just like stop. love everyone respect the, the problem here is it, like it's insane it's like stop hating on people that's what we're trying to do yeah we're not trying pretty to, much like, oh my god it's insane to me how people are like oh you're white oh so the you, fucking you hate have, you're white so you don't have an opinion or you're white or you're not allowed to talk about yeah. this type of shit i'm like go fuck yourself i think that i think that it is reasonable to say that a certain type of person wouldn't be able to speak as well on certain topics about this mm -hmm. thing as you know someone yeah. else 
but to say someone else yeah i agree to say that you don't have an don't opinion because it doesn't matter yeah, yeah that's where i'm just like go fuck yourself mm -hmm. you don't know you, anything everyone has an opinion like everyone grows up differently like just for context like i am asian and then but i did grow up with like a white mom and a white household asian? Hey, obviously in a yeah yes uh, <laughs> crackhead of yes course, I, I, that was a joke the, the, okay, the joke was still. that everyone sees your face on the picture and i don't think anybody has ever questioned <laughs> that's like me saying okay the by the way people that listen <laughs> is she asian or like what the by the way i'm she? black guy <laughs> I, to be fair i, I know I alex is thing. a black man <laughs> and i put alex and kelsey because a before k i don't know i think it looks better but anyways anyways but yeah it's like uh for context like yeah i am asian and my husband is white and just because he is white doesn't mean he grew up in a like privileged household or like a huge mansion with everything handed to him on a silver spoon like no he had to work really hard for what he has today and he just because you're like like we said like you said just because you're white like you grow up differently from other fucking white people not everybody grows up with like a silver spoon in their hands so like they have opinions too and like fucking just literally everyone's everyone matters like just fucking respect everyone that's the thing i don't understand right now in this world like everyone wants respect but nobody wants to give respect and respect other people's opinions and their upbringing so like yes you can't really speak on racial slurs that might be thrown at you if you are white but it's like you at least like you have a different upbringing so like maybe you can't relate to racial slurs but maybe you can relate to growing up in like from nothing and working hard as fuck and giving yourself something so like that's the end of my like another small rant but yeah just like we can all relate on certain subjects just like have respect for one e one another and like listen to their story and then digest it and then maybe give your opinion if you have one yeah yeah exactly yeah uh it's I, I, I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand that. I don't the either. Necessity of, I like, really don't, and Alex. hate and stuff like that. I think that, again, there's a lot of things that are valid. There's a lot of um, arguments that are valid that I think that a lot of people conflate into hatred. Um, and that's what we end up, that's what we end up getting wrong is that as how we start to inflate problems with hatred, conflate uh, problems with, uh, with, with hatred, where we, we might see that a person who is white <clears throat> um and they might come they, they might come around and they might say uh like oh you know um uh i don't get why i, th I think i think one a good one was like the tom mcdonald where he was like oh you know like i don't get with all these like black like these, these black issue stuff where ever where everyone is hating on me and saying that i have a problem i, I have something to do with this when i um when i have never hated on a black person in my entire life and you see that type of person and you get two responses or three you get three but the third one is really ever rarely existent you get one the radical people who are for those people who are like yeah fuck black people and you get the radical and then you get the second which is radical people who are against that person who's like fuck you for thinking like that and you get the third one which is the one that i'm more like which i will look into that and i will look into what he says and i'll say okay i understand where you're coming from i understand that it feels like you're being attacked for something that you did not do because you probably didn't do it you probably have uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of just like there's a pr probably a bunch of hillbilly motherfuckers who have black friends <laughs> who have never thought about anything racist in their entire life but they're they, they're get, they're gonna get condemned on, on social media just because of either some jokes that they uh, uh some jokes that they're either used to or just like just some things that they have never thought about in their entire life and so like mm -hmm. when i see that type of person i don't see hatred for them i see ignorance I see confusion. I see, oh, you don't, you don't, you don't, you either don't understand what this movement is either for, or you're getting, you're getting the fucking, those, those vocal, uh, vocal minority motherfuckers who are just mad at everything. And you just have to understand that there are just people who are just mad at everything. Like, don't be affected by those people. Cause unfortunately everybody has them. You have the people who just hate black people <laughs> and you have the people who just hate everybody who disagrees with them and you have just these people True. who are just hatred over over anything you can't listen to those people because those aren't the normal people twitter isn't the world twitter isn't 
society. The internet isn't the world. People don't understand that, and I, I get into argue. I got into an argument with my ex, with an ex friend for that, where. Uh, he was. He would tell me like, oh, like fucking. Well, Twitter is all like this, and Twitter is like saying that like uh, they no. they hate police people. It's like Twitter, bro. Oh, if God. you went to the onto the street, Twitter's fake. Yeah, if you went onto the street and asked a random person what the neck, what the oh, highest God. topic on Twitter, Twitter is, they're probably gonna ask they you what the know. fuck are you talking about. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna be. I don't like, literally, know. they'd be like, dude, I don't know. Yeah, the, 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 most people don't fuck with Twitter that that much. You have a very large portion of you have a large portion of people who. Are very very drawn to Twitter, but those large that large portion of people are a minority in just the entirety of the world. So you don't you can't expect the fucking oh yeah no um, no, no no the fucking a normal human yeah. would not know yeah, what the fuck Twitter is exactly or what's going the on the average person the Twitter sphere like even me yeah. I don't go on Twitter often at all the common folk I've started <laughs> tweeting though so follow me at oh, God, uh, in a, in in hoping in h x p i n g <laughs> Um, oh God, I hate you for that. <laughs> but I, your little plug. Hey, yeah, hey. Uh, I think last episode I said that I was gonna do a lot more social media stuff. That's true. So I Love you for that. Um, though. I, yeah, yeah, I've been tweeting a little bit more, but it's it's literally just been random shit. I always I just told myself that I'm just gonna tweet more often, and so it's just random shit that I just think about, like whatever. But anyway, um, even I like I don't understand Twitter, and I would consider myself very very like knowledgeable about like what's going on in the world and stuff like that. But Twitter is just not it, bro. So, chill. <laughs> uh, yeah. Chill. Uh, Tom McDonald. I, he, I think Tom McDonald knows that now. But with that that song that he made a long time ago, like he was, he was very very confused, and it's just like they're not talking to you. Like if if you don't have anything to do with this, like then they're probably and then then the real Get people out. are probably not talking to talking to you. Should you probably learn a little bit more about like this entire sphere? Absolutely. Because it's very, very nuanced. And for those who don't know what nuance means, it just, there's so much more to it um, than just what meets the eye in a way. Um, so do learn more about it. Because if you do think that you're being attacked by a large group of people, you're probably not. You're probably just missing out yeah. on something. Especially on Twitter, like, chill, dude. Chill, my man. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't or control woman. those other, the, the, the fucking Twitter rights that will hate on you but we can control that you can control the way that you respond to it that is true though i like that i like that a lot mm -hmm. um that was a very weird tangent yeah um, tangent rant <laughs> but i love that though about us we're very weird and tangenty um so my final question for you is your overall thoughts on the movie well uh oh God. <laughs> <laughs> i did not hate the movie at all um, oh yeah, yeah, I like that. Surprise. I like that. Okay, awesome. Uh, at first, rating, though? I really did rating? not want to watch the movie. I'm getting to it. At I first, I really did not want to watch the movie at all. I know from last, uh, last time. Yeah, it looked boring as hell. And I know. again, as I stated before, I heard you. I didn't want to see a story of just for the sake that they're disabled. Like that just seemed very just. Yeah. I wanted to see if if I wanted to see a disabled movie, I wanted to see a movie about everything, even about the fact that it's not all hunky dory um people who are disabled ha are disabled so you have to understand that like you can't like yeah they they are normal people but understand that their lives do kind of suck so if basically if you see somebody who is crying because of it don't go there like oh dude your life's amazing like you understand that they're like, realistic. like they, they're dealing with some they shit. have struggles yeah they have struggles they have more struggles than we do yeah on, on, ab on average yeah absolutely so yeah. understand like they have more obstacles than us that's what i wanted to show and so oh, that's what i wanted to see and i saw a good portion of that i saw enough of it okay um and then the the middle the second the first to the second part were very actually interesting the third part was just very boring <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, and I was just kind of like, all right, please end the movie. But then the fourth part, it ended up pretty <laughs> well, and I was actually, I was, okay. I was kind of. Uh, there were times in the movie that I actually smiled because I was like, very. Oh, I, it was, it I was like very that. uplifting. Okay. Awesome. So Good. that being said, uh, I think most likely I would probably out of out of five, I'd probably get a four. It, it would be a four out of five. Oh my god! Awesome. Yeah, there, it's a good documentary. It's very interesting. Um, it's it's very, for those who aren't very knowledgeable on um on uh disability it, it'll it'll kind of help you mm -hmm. understand what these people have gone through yes. um and also kind of normalizing these types of people because i think 
so too. Sometime, yeah. uh, sometimes we look at people and we listen to them. And at first we're just kind of like, all right, this person what? isn't making any sense. Yeah. I don't know what this person is saying or this person is, you know, mentally retarded, you know, therefore blah, blah, blah. But so, something that this movie kind of showed was kind of help you understand that, okay, now these people have thoughts and cares. And I remember, feelings, you remember the, the girl who, who couldn't really speak well at all. And like, yeah, Nancy. I, yeah, I think it was Nancy. Um, who I think was she the one that I think she died, right? I think that was the. Yeah, yeah she ended she up dying. Like, died pretty early, which is kind of sad. But yeah, yeah. Like, she went into like this rant, and then Steve. Yeah. Like and he was decoded. Just, yeah, everything decoded she everything. Said. Like, uh, bro, I'm I like. I literally <laughs> cried. I literally cried. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like serious. I cried. It made me. Like, it made me uh, really yeah. sad because. I don't know how I would be able to exist like that. Um, I know. Uh, with like, there's a chance. Like if, if they didn't have a Steve, no one would know what the fuck she just said. Exactly. And yeah, that, that like, that yeah. was something that was surprised. That was also a shocking moment to me because I did like, I know realize this thing, which I, to be fair, I've always knew, but it was just a little bit more prevalent, which was just that I don't know what I would do if I was just unable to be understood. Um, yeah our ability to like speak and like yeah uh, <gasps> pronunciate like our words like okay literally nancy like when that scene like it literally made me cry because i could not imagine just being like just trapped in my body and thinking i'm speaking but nobody really understands what i'm saying like being able to like vocalize like my thoughts opinions my wants my needs my dislikes my mm. loves like that like it actually made me cry watching it it's like just being trapped in your own body yeah and like you don't have any movement over it you you can't like speak well enough for people to like understand you so like yeah that whole scene i was like oh my god for like those what <laughs> for those interested and this is all like if you're the type of person that i am so i'm the type of person who i want to know like I like to. I hate to make judgments on things that I have that I don't know anything about, like we st like we st stated previously. So um, sometimes I like to put myself in the shoes of people um, mm -hmm. where I can, where it's safe, um, where I'm able to kind of understand a little bit more. And so um, something that I find that it's interesting is that uh, by taking acid, you kind of can get a glimpse of what, what the it's fuck? yeah. You can kind of get a glimpse of what it's like to be in to, to be crazy. Um, and for the most part, you'll have a great time. Um, but sometimes you, you kind of like, depending on the amount that you take, there might be like minutes that you're kind of like, Ooh, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uneasy or, no, or you. like there's this kind of thought in my head that feels so real that if I were sober, I'd be able to completely just ignore that thought. But being, you know, in this state of mind, my brain is like, Oh no, this thing made it might actually exist. And so you start to kind of like when it comes to like you know trying acid or even sometimes like i think my the first time i experienced this kind of like feeling of oh i kind of understand now is when i was smoking weed at school for the first time and like uh oh, wow. every single crazy bitch <laughs> yeah and uh i uh my my head kept feeling like it was catching fire like but not not like oh my God. it didn't it didn't it didn't feel like it was hot rather i think the best way to okay. say it, rather than catching fire was just that uh wind blew on me weird <laughs> that's that's the best way to say it so like <laughs> Wait, what? yeah wind blew on me weird so like the the okay. wind kind of felt very different than what it felt like when i was sober it was just kind of like oh i don't really like the way that that felt mm. um so what i would do is i would kind of like i would shake my head a little bit did i have to shake my head the answer is no um was it did it kind of like make me look really weird yes so yeah the, so the thing is is that that kind of that that kind of um helps me experience what it is to be uh very very mildly very mildly autistic because some some autism um requires you i think it's i'm pretty sure it's autism um that is they have these ticks they have these like weird ticks where it's like oh I, you know they'll like shake a little bit and you're like oh like you know um you know, it's it's automatic or something like in your brain you're just kind of like oh yeah autistic people they have takes like whatever but when you actually listen to an autistic person they're like i don't necessarily have to do it it's just more like an itch like it's like oh yeah. I, I i just it makes me uncomfortable if i don't so do something it. yeah and that's exactly what that was to me i could have stopped but i was just like ah just, but it's just really weird i just i just want to do it so i had a tick because of it so similarly 
uh, having acid, like, like taking acid kind of puts you in a very similar state of, state of mind. Uh, not in that, it, it makes you a lot worse than that where sometimes you might actually go down a thought process uh, where you start to think that like, oh, maybe that you're dying or maybe that you don't exist anymore. That, I guess, that's the best, like, that's the best example just because it's more, it's less, you know, scary. But yeah, uh, it's called ego death and you start to just believe that you don't exist anymore. You're just like, oh, I just, I, I'm dead. <laughs> and the thing is, is that you're not like sober. <laughs> so you don't know that you don't exist. Oh, like you don't Alex. know that you exist, but because your brain is going is, is going crazy in a way like you you now experience what it's like to be fucking crazy and so all that is to say to bring back to you, the heck? knowing that it scares the hell out of me that people cannot turn that off because the problem with me mm, is that true. with acid the pr the problem with acid is that sometimes you're so high and you're so paranoid that you're just like okay how long do I have left and with acid, acid takes around yes. twelve hours, half like half a day. So you're all you're always you always understand that you have the rest of the day. So for me, I was like, okay, I'll just have to like I just have to deal with with it for ride the rest of out. the day. You write it out. For these people, they cannot. For these people, it's just every single fucking day, and it's very random. I chose to put the acid in my system and to and That's to do true. this and to experience that. These people cannot choose that, and it makes me so much more uh, 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 understanding of the problems that these people have. It's just like, oh no, they cannot control it. You don't know how, you do not know how much they cannot control it without putting yourself in that position yourself. That is that, true that though. Kind of redundant, and you will never know how they feel. Yeah, you will never know how they how they feel. And most likely they have it a lot worse than even just taking acid. <laughs> they have mm -hmm. it so much, so much, so much mm -hmm. worse. But I think- I think that's a good perspective yeah. that you just said, honestly. Yeah, I think it's I think important it's to be able to do that. Just be like, I, I, I take a pride, pride, I, I say that a lot. Uh, I take pride in just my <laughs> ability to say that like, or my, my, my want to be put in that situation. So I'm able to yeah, look at these people. Your ability and say, to be in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that I can like look at somebody and say, I understand at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, yeah, again, like it's that. always, I'm always afraid of, you know, deeming something some way without ever experiencing it. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I say go for it if that's what yeah. you're into. Also, lastly for me is that <laughs> Okay. Out of My Mind by Sharon Draper is an amazing book. It's about a disabled girl. Okay. And um, she's basically, uh, it's, it's a beautiful book. It's called Out of My Mind. It's by Sharon Draper. I, I read it when I was in middle school. It has forever since been my favorite book that I've ever read ever. Um, and I would highly recommend it. And it, it's very, very, very connected to what we're talking about today, which is disabled like disabilities. Because the main character is completely disabled and she uh, she talks by uh, either pointing to words or um, later on mm. in the book, she gains a, uh, a, 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 a a technological one where she could just press a button and it'll say the word. Yeah. Um, but oh, that's interesting. yeah, it's a very good book. I would highly recommend it. I really love it, and I think it ends perfectly. Oh, I might, um, I might read that now. Yeah, I, I would, I would one hundred percent recommend that. <laughs> okay, I might read it like for real. Um, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. I liked all those points you point out. Like we have the um, ability, the will, the free will to like, if we wanted to take psychedelic drugs, like we can, mm -hmm. and we have that amazing privilege almost to like our bodies will like slowly wean ourselves off to be quote unquote like normal functioning but i just like even the times i've been high like i couldn't imagine being in that state all the time because like i we'll talk about this later in our next topic of the week which might be soon it's just like yeah i just bleh, i didn't like it at all but um my um i like i like the points you made like that that was a good point to make like being able to go in and out of different states of like our minds and like our body but, like some people don't have that ability to and they're just encapsulated in it forever and have to like adapt even if the outside world doesn't really know what they're going through which i think it's crazy as fuck you know yeah like, you know like think you might understand someone but you like really don't know what's going on yeah. within their brain or mind or body or spirit how they feel and overall i'd rate this movie five out of five i loved it so much i thought it was like super eye-opening honestly like with like ada and how accessibility is like prevalent in businesses and their practices and 
I just thought it was a really good movie. How like the Black Panthers like partnered with them and everything that yeah, sort go of Black Panthers. Jazz. I, I love. That. I know, like for real though, like this is before like the true hate of America America came out and like we supported each other, whatever the problem may be. But that's for another rant, I guess. But yeah, I thought that was a good movie. Like you said too, like if you want to learn more about like disabilities and um, like how America has adapted to people with physical disabilities and mental disabilities are both like this is a really good movie to just like low-key educate yourself on it and how to give yourself a bigger perspective on i think overall this episode is just like or this podcast is just like how to treat people with respect honestly so yeah, some people don't know how to yeah. do that they don't and it's so sad but hopefully we can all just we can fucking learn to respect each other and i think i think that was a good like movie review but um do you have a movie for next week i do have a movie oh my god do you actually have the fucking I movie i actually have a movie this time oh my god okay so what the fuck is it okay so it was, it was gonna be so there was actually three different movies that i was like ooh, oh god. i really like them but we can all we could each do okay. them different at like different times this one go. is something that I was I was looking on Netflix. Um, I actually the previous two where I actually had uh, had queued first, but this one I saw and okay, I was like, okay, maybe it's interesting. It. So uh, I chose Concrete Cowboy. Um, it is on Netflix. It's an hour and fifty one minutes. Um, okay. Don't know anything about it, but I it says it's that. intimate, inspiring, and emotional. It has the mm, black kid from um, uh, from Stranger Things in Stranger it. Stranger Things, yeah, yeah okay. Um, he looks so I much saw that older. preview last night. Ooh, yeah. yeah. He looks so much older now. Oh it's insane. I, I haven't watched. He's the... an older man. Yeah, he is. All of them are, are so much older. <laughs> They're older. We're getting old too. We're slowly. You know dying. what's insane? It's insane yeah. how like how often I'm like I'm like watching a bunch of people. And then I realized that they're younger than me, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! Right? Oh my I'm gosh! Up. <laughs> Not even that old, but I like, that. there's just I know there's people they're growing up. Yeah, there are people that like are like growing up in front of me, and they're they just like, oh yeah, I'm like, yep. I can think of Juice World is younger than was younger than us. Oh yeah, and he like died. Yeah, yeah as well as X. Rip. Yeah, rest in peace, both of them. But R I P. Rip, rip, rip. Uh, but yeah, that's just very interesting. Do you have a topic Why? for next no, week? Fine, please. Yeah, my <laughs> topic of the week is going to be like drugs, cause like I'm getting a new job. But yeah, anyways, yeah, I think it should be like drugs, like our first time using drugs. I think too, like our topics of the week should be like our evolutions. I kind of like that, like how we have like religious, career, social mm-hmm. evolutions, which is like our drug evolution, our thoughts now today. How they affect oh, yeah. us as we are getting older. So I've changed. A I lot. think um, yeah, I think that'd be good. Just like um, our drug evolution and our thoughts, like when we first got introduced to like how we are now. So I have a fucking sad story about drugs. So. We'll, we'll talk about that next episode. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining our conversation. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And we will see you in the next chat.